So the Book of Boba Fett has three episodes remaining. Episode 5, 6, and 7 are about to be seen in the coming weeks. And I got myself to a point where I needed to ask the question that has been on everybody's mind. A lot of you guys have been asking me, will Omega show up in this series? There's been rampant speculation, especially since Tamora Morrison said that episode 7, the finale, will have a crazy, crazy cameo. Now, those rumors were fueled even more when we heard the Mandalorian theme in the closing scene of episode 4. This gave us room to speculate for days. I hoped in general will come in in the next episode, although many are kind of rooting for Omega to show up also. This would be Omega's first time in live action. In first, Omega was introduced not a long time ago, six or seven months ago. She made her debut in the Bad Batch series, albeit in an animated form. In that series, we learn a lot about the Jango Fat clones, not only about the ones we know and love, but also about longtime clones that we've known and love also, and that is Boba Fett is not his real name. He was born as Alpha, the first unaltered, unmodified, a complete replica of Django Fett. Now, Boba Fett, or Alpha, went on to be raised, trained by Django Fett. Affectionately, he was his father. We cannot say the same thing about Omega, though. Omega was the other unmodified, unaltered clone, albeit a female clone. It is mentioned that Omega was enhanced by Nala Se. In what capacity, we don't know yet. But we might find out in this series, in the book of Boba Fett, since a long time have passed, now Boba is an adult, and we suspect that Omega is out there somewhere, making her way around the galaxy, same as her father, Jango Fett. However, as I said, I got to thinking, there is a major question that I don't think has gotten a clear answer yet, and instead of focusing strictly, will Omega be back in the book of Boba Fett, I wanted to ask the question, does Boba even know that Omega exists. By all intents and purposes, Boba Fett has never even mentioned Omega once. I'm talking post Bad Batch. Boba Fett has not mentioned her in the comics, has not mentioned her in this series. But for most of you who have forgotten, I'm gonna go back to the Bad Batch just a little bit and explain in detail about Omega. Shows that Omega's lack of an inhibitor chip, this proves to be an asset basically. She is able to break through to Wrecker, to stop him from attacking his squad mates at times, even though the Bad Badge gang does not seem to be affected by the inhibitor chip except for Crosshair and now Wrecker, even though Hunter and Tech did not have any problems, they in the end elected to remove their inhibitor chips just in case. However, Omega is definitely immune to this control. The explanation of course lies that Omega is completely different from all the other clones. The only thing she shares with other clones is that she came from the Django DNA template. She is the first female clone to be based on Django Fett's DNA and acted not as a soldier, but as a medical assistant, something that the clones are not known for. It's possible that the Empire simply didn't see a need to install an inhibitor chip in Omega as she was not intended to be on the battlefield fighting alongside the Jedi, and then whenever Order 66 is executed, she will kill this subsequent Jedi. Furthermore, we don't know exactly the timeline of when she was created. Presumably, of course, she was created before Order 66, but she is a youngling after all, and we know that by the cloning process, their age is accelerated. Therefore, she might appear as 7 or 8 years old, but she might be younger than that in human years. If that is so, the events of the Bad Batch show why the Empire should have worried about controlling Omega anyway. This is why you cross your T's and dot your I's. Again, what Luke Skywalker said to Palpatine in Return of the Jedi comes to mind. Your overconfidence is your weakness. Basically, the Empire moved into that manner. Once they grabbed control of everything, their overconfidence slowly grew to be something of a problem that they did not anticipate. Furthermore, the lack of an inhibitor chip could further suggest that Omega is different from other Star Wars clones in more than just appearance. Most clones in the army underwent growth acceleration to make them adults quickly. But by contrast, Omega still has a childlike appearance. So let's give an, a different scenario. If she is indeed like Boba Fett, which was a ordinary clone with no accelerated aging, 
she could be aging naturally, or at least closer to nature than the rest of the clone army. Perhaps she is not yet at that growth stage where an inhibitor chip could be safe to install. Creating a female clone from a male source likely involved a lot of genetic tampering, raising the question of why it was worth all this trouble just to create a medical assistant. This is why the theories are spectacular about Omega. She is not all that she seems. She is definitely more than meets the eye, and everybody who meets Omega knows this immediately. In fact, that's what happened to Captain Rex. He immediately noticed that Omega is much more vigilant and careful than he anticipated, not just like an ordinary kid. It's possible that Omega has a much deeper purpose, and that's why an inhibitor chip could interfere with this purpose. Omega could be a Force-sensitive clone, after all, who definitely needed an unimpeded, un unmodified brain to work with. However, I don't doubt that given how obsessed Palpatine is with his empire and its growth, ultimately, as a chancellor, he sought to control his soldiers as much as possible. That much is evident with the inhibitor chips and the Kaminoans. The Kaminoans must have had an important reason for leaving one of its creations, which is Omega, uncontrollable and without an inhibitor chip. This means that Omega, unlike other clones, is completely free, and she exudes free will. Again, most if not all the other clones. So we know that after all this, if Omega makes it to the Book of Boba Fett, either in the finale or in one of the episodes, this will be her first time in live action. Why I think that it's a phenomenal idea to bring back Omega is simply because now we have leeway for Season 2 of the Book of Boba Fett. Season 1 has had a rocky start, I gotta admit that. There were some mediocre episodes that were not that great, there were some episodes that were awesome, there has been ups and downs. So where will this series continue on after this season? Will we even care about a season two? This is why I think it's crucial that Omega comes back for season two, because then we will have a contentious relationship between Alpha and Omega, between these two Django clones that will probably hash it out. Django taught Boba Fett to fight, but Omega was trained by none other than the Bad Batch. She got prime training from one of the best assassin groups in the galaxy. So let me know what do you guys think as well. Talk to me down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe for dailies. Now you can have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.